Do you think, for me, someone who is metabolically healthy, consuming all protein from plant sources, that consuming above the kind of RDA is is going to have some sort of long-term deleterious effect on my health? The data uh, suggests yes, right? So for cancer, when we went from animal to plant-based, those that had more than 20% of calories com- com- coming from uh, proteins, uh, if it was um, animal-based, there was a 400% increase in the risk of developing cancer. And if it was more plant-based, it was a 300%. Now, the, the effect on overall mortality went away when we were looking at subjects that were on a more plant-based uh, uh, source. Yeah, so then um, there can definitely be uh, differences, but I think that um, at least the data would suggest that if it doesn't really matter if it's plant-based or animal-based. Once you get so high that the plant-based amino acid profile is equivalent to that of the uh, animal base, right? So this is probably why the IGF-1, in the papers that were published, uh, um, the IGF-1 uh, returned to, uh, to normal levels from eating more uh, pro- plant-based proteins. Do you think that some of the, the benefits that we see in the research um, – where we see people consuming more plant protein is is also driven by the entire package, the the differences in saturated fat and, and fiber, et cetera. Yes. So the IGF-1 and lots of markers are not going to, uh, TOR, in, including TOR, are not just going to be affected by, uh, by plant, uh, by proteins and amino acids, probably the, the levels of sugar, insulin, and lots of other um, factors um, coming from nutrition and maybe not just nutrition are going to be um, playing a role. So, yeah, so then everything matters, but certainly if you look at the studies, the, uh, the proteins and the amino acids are playing the key role. Um, methionine certainly being one of them, leucine being another one. Uh, so those leucines certainly uh, seems to be associated with levels of, of uh, TOR and methionine and cysteine with the levels of, of IGF-1. So uh, not surprisingly, plant-based uh, uh, protein sources have low levels of these. And so th- those are at the center of growth pathways, um, but everything else probably uh, matters. And we also knew this from, from very basic studies in yeast where we, we had the amino acids and TOR signaling goes up. But then if you had sugar, uh, that also uh, that also drives tor signaling. Um, so, I mean, this is a very simple system, so we can tell exactly what's happening. As you go to humans, it's very complex uh, uh, environment; it's a lot harder. But but probably that that's the case too. That uh, multiple components are contributing to uh, to uh, growth signaling. <laughs> 